I commonly like to ask my kids for topics they would be interested in learning about in the upcoming homeschool year. And so I did that last year and my six-year-old son said, dinosaurs, give him all the dinosaurs, which I thought was really fun. I love the idea that it's a little bit of science, it's a little bit of history. So I went into starting to plan my dinosaur unit. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you are new here. I'm a mom to four, I love to homeschool, I love to read good books, and I love to share both of those things on this channel. And so if you also love those things, please consider subscribing. Before I get too far, I wanna preface this all by saying that we are a Christian homeschool family, but I also have a PhD in microbiology and I absolutely love science. And after doing a bunch of research, reading a ton of books, I will actually leave a link to a video where I was showing some of the books I was reading this past summer, mostly about like faith and science. And so I loved this book. So this is Science and Faith by C. John Collins. Excellent. It's a bit of a beast of a book, but it's so good. This one's much shorter. So if you don't have as much time, this is excellent as well. It's The Seven Days That Divide the World by John C. Lennox. They definitely helped me solidify the fact that I really fall out way more on the side of an old earth perspective when it comes to the age of the earth. As for evolution, I still need to do some reading, but for the most part, I do not believe in kind of the whole primordial goo. There's just a little too much unknown there. And I do believe that God created. How he created, I'm not so sure. All that to say, I am using a secular resource for my dinosaur unit, and I am planning to weave my faith throughout to help my kids understand a little bit more about the dinosaurs and how our planet came to be and exciting topics like that. And so I realized for the homeschooling community, this is a challenging issue and I do not downplay that. But for this video, I just really wanted to share all of the resources that have really brought dinosaurs and prehistory just to life for my kids, which I wouldn't trade for anything. So the base program I am using is Build Your Library. So for those of you who follow my channel, that's not a big surprise. I love Build Your Library. We have used it for level zero around the world and we are planning to use it for level one, which I just put out a video a couple weeks ago detailing how I plan on doing that. So please see that if you are interested. But Build Your Library is a secular literature based homeschool program. And the one I am using for this is the prehistory unit study. It's a six week program that includes history books, prehistoric art, vocab, copywork, activities, and a lot of media suggestions. So like a lot of documentaries and things like that. And the information is split up into kind of three big sections. So you're talking first, Big Bang and kind of early life, and second, dinosaurs, and third, ice age and early man. So let me kind of go through the resources I use. So to start with Big Bang and early life, I kicked the whole thing off with a game, which I found online. This wasn't part of the curriculum, but I found it and I really liked it. It is a twist in time. It's basically a fossil game and you have clues and you have the little dice and it basically goes through how hard it is to make a fossil because it was actually quite hard to win this game. And so we had that on our first day and I also kicked it off with a fossil collection kit, which I will link all of these resources below obviously. And they love this because they got to touch and feel some of the fossils and what they would look like. And it just really solidified the idea of fossils in their head. So I love that. As for books, the main book resource was the Usborne Encyclopedia of World History, which we loved and has all the links that you can go to the Usborne site and watch little clips and little videos of say the dinosaurs or some of these crazy sea creatures or these huge megafaunas that were found in Australia. It was just really, really fun. They enjoyed that a lot. And then there's also Life Story by Virginia Lee Burton, which was really good as well. A big story of just all the different animals and dinosaurs and such. And so it's a very beautiful book and I really enjoyed it. We got that from our library. I feel like it's a common one at libraries. The other book we picked up was a read aloud and it was called Nadia Knox and the Eye of Zinnia, which I have since returned. It was actually a book recommended through the Torchlight curriculum and it was just a fun little adventure story of this girl with archeologists for parents who go looking for this hidden tribe and they got to ask questions like, well, should we bring culture to them? Is that even ours to do? It was really good, good thought provoking questions. And it was just a good little adventure story. Additionally, in the program, she details setting up a timeline for this time in history, which spans millions of years, right? And I had to kind of figure out a good way to do this with my kids. We didn't have a ton of wall space. And so I found one and I will link this below because I really enjoyed this. And I thought this was a really good idea. 
So it's basically this woman on Teachers Pay Teachers, she created this timeline that you can basically set up in like an accordion, getting away from me. And, and so I put it with my books and then when we'd pull it out, we would just open it to the section we were on. It's upside down, I see that now. Here it's the Jurassic period. And so when we got to there, I would have the kids draw different dinosaurs, we would label them. Sometimes we would watercolor, draw a volcano. They just really enjoyed the fact that they got to keep adding to it and that we could show their dad. And it was just a neat resource that I could fold up and put in our book bin. All right, as for the next section, which was dinosaurs, this is the one I added the most to because like I said, my son requested dinosaurs specifically. And so I got extra books and extra activities for this section of our unit study. And it also used these three things of the us born life story and the timeline. But the curriculum included some other stuff, which I loved. So there is the magic school bus and the time of the dinosaurs. My kids love the magic school bus. And there is actually a link in her program that takes you to one of the old episodes of the magic school bus. And they really liked that. As for some extra books, I picked up this and I really enjoyed it. So this is how to be a dinosaur hunter, your globe trotting time traveling guide from Lonely Planet. It was really fun. Uh, the pictures were great. It kind of went continent by continent almost through the different time periods or the different eras. And it was, it was really fun. They looked at it a ton. I also picked up this in my Usborne haul at the beginning of the year. It's the life-size dinosaur book. And they really liked this because for instance, it just shows you a life-size picture of how big some of these features of the dinosaurs really were. And they were huge. And the biggest one, and most impressive one is the Tyrannosaurus Rex mouth. It goes like all the way across. And so they just love that. It, again, for this age, it's hard for them to kind of realize how big these animals were. And so resources like that were just very, very helpful. I also picked up this book, which we didn't use a ton. It had some beautiful pictures though. It's When the Whales Walked. And it went through just some interesting features of different animals and some comparative anatomy of how these animals were similar and how they may have developed and things like that. And so I enjoyed it, my kids enjoyed it. It's also a very beautiful book. So we liked that one. And lastly, I picked up two of these, one for each of my big kids. It's the dinosaur sticker book, Build Your Own Dinosaurs. They love this. This actually was really helpful because I got to use the sticker books anytime we were reading aloud from all of our different resources and my kids paid way more attention when their hands were busy making sticker dinosaur stuff. So this was a great resource. As for different activities, so I did set up a dinosaur dig and I will link the blog post for this dig, which is so simple. It's basically cornstarch and water with your dinosaurs. And I bought some dinosaur skeletons, the little mini ones off of Amazon and stuck them in there and then you let it dry until it kind of gets all cracked and then you let them dig out the dinosaurs. I'll put a couple pictures here of my kids doing this because they really enjoyed it. It was a really fun activity and it was very easy to set up. So it wasn't very crafty because I'm just not a very crafty mom. As for another activity, we did this dinosaur painting activity, which I'll hold it up a little closer. My kids love this. I will also insert a couple pictures of them doing this activity because they thought it was so much fun to be able to paint the different dinosaurs. My son's more of a perfectionist, so he wanted to do it just like they were on the, the box, and so he just really enjoyed that. So that was a very fun activity. As for documentaries, this was by far the best. So this is called Prehistoric Park. It's a BBC series, and it is more appropriate for kids. I was running into some problems with some of the documentaries that involved dinosaurs. They were just really I mean, they're violent, they're dinosaurs. And so there was just some things were just a little too scary for my kids and they tend to be on the sensitive side. So I know that. So this was a little bit better, even though this had some parts where we had to fast forward. And we do have Curiosity Stream, but they didn't have any that I really wanted to play for the kids yet. Probably in a couple of years, we can watch some of those. The last game or activity I picked up for the dinosaur section was this one. These card line games, dinosaurs, and they are just really fun. This is a game that I would recommend playing after you have gone pretty much all the way through your dinosaur unit because it pulls up all sorts of different animals on the cards. I mean, some of them are like the woolly mammoth and others are very much dinosaurs. Some are sea creatures. 
and the kids get to guess if like one animal is bigger than the other or weighs more or came from a different time frame. And now to move into the last section. So you're talking like ice age, early humans, stone age people. Uh, my kids loved this section. I feel like the read alouds in this section just really helped this time frame come to life. We read this one. So that's the sunset of the saber tooth. So it's a magic tree house, I think number seven. They really enjoyed this being transported back in time and things like that. So we always love these. I also have Maru, which we are just now finishing up. So I don't have it in my stack. It's in my daughter's room. It's an excellent book. It definitely has some harder topics, but I pre-read that one just to make sure I knew what to expect and how to prepare my kids for it. But that one is probably my favorite, hands down, just because it is so good at describing what it would feel like to be a part of one of these nomadic tribes that are on the plains that live in huts or caves and have to catch all their food and weather is just such a big deal and it was so good so good so i highly recommend that even if you're not going to use any of these other resources the maru read aloud is excellent but for some other resources this is the first section where we got to dive into this book which was the prehistoric art book and so this starts talking about like cave paintings and how the people mix the paints and things like that so we really enjoyed that this book was archaeology for kids and this book I liked, but my kids weren't paying too much attention. So I actually subbed it out for a different book that I found through the Torchlight curriculum. And that is Stone Age. It's a DK find out book. And this was great. There was like lots of different information about the tribes and what they wear and what they hunt and how they move around and things like that, that that was excellent. We also read this one. You wouldn't want to be a mammoth hunter. And these are great. It's there a little bit more violent in their pictures, but I think it's really fine because they are cartoony kinds of pictures, but that was a fun one. And then we ended it out with books on the cave, the drawings in the cave. So the first drawing as well as the secret cave. I, I used both of those. I think this was Build Your Library and this might have been recommended in the first week of Torchlight, level one. And so I used both of those and we just really enjoyed that. And there was an early reader that I also picked up that was off of Emily's suggested book list. So we picked that up. And I also picked up a sticker book for Ice Age, which they really enjoyed. They just enjoy the sticker books, like I said. So those were some of the other resources. As for activities, the big one we did was a cave drawings. And actually I use Artistic Pursuits and this was in their Ancients. They had great instructions and we used soft pastels and my kids' pictures I think turned out really good. So I'll put some pictures up of that, but that was a fun activity. And then as we kind of rounded out and we're almost done with this unit, we watched a bunch of the Disney movies. We did like, we watched Ice Age 1, Ice Age 2, the, what was it called, Cruds, Cruds? I can't remember, the ones about the Stone Age people. I think there's a new movie coming out. Also, we rounded the whole thing out by my husband taking the kids to a dinosaur resource center, I think it was called, like it's a museum of dinosaurs near us and they just really enjoyed that. So they understood it all so much better and they were just like, whoa, we know about this, dad, we know about that. And so he said it was just really cute and really fun. But there were a number of things about the curriculum we didn't use, which is always how I use curriculum. I'm not too worried about it. We didn't use the activity that she had written in that was kind of over the course of the six weeks about designing and drawing a field guide of prehistoric animals. We did not do that. I thought the timeline was enough. My son is seven and my daughter's five, and then I have twin three-year-olds, and they just make things hard sometimes. So we just really hit the high points of the stuff that I knew that my kids would like, and we skipped a lot of the other activities. Regardless, I feel like my kids have just learned so much. I feel like we were able to really immerse ourselves in this time of history. So that's what I have for our dinosaur unit. It was really fun. We really enjoyed it. I would love to know if any of you have attempted a dinosaur unit. I feel like it's fairly popular with this age of boys especially. So leave that below if you have. Otherwise, that's all I have. So thank you for taking the time to watch. And please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you aren't already subscribed. Otherwise, I will see you in the next homeschooling video. All right, have a wonderful day.